Okay, good morning and welcome to Yeshiva YouTube. Yom Ben Tzion. Today we're analyzing Ksuvos Mem Ches, Ksuvos number 48. The Mishnah on the bottom of Mem Ches Amanal talks about a concept that seems to, to be hard to understand what we're talking about. Mesira giving over of the father gives his daughter over. L'shluchei Abal. What does that mean, L'shluchei Abal? Who are the Shluchem of the Baal? Who are we talking about? I mean, what, one person lives on the husband, the, the, the parents live in America, and the parents of the girl live in America. The girl is from America, and the boy's from Australia. So when she gets on a flight, right, and they have, you know, people, couriers to take her from America, to accompany her, the husband sends some agents to go, you know, accompany her on the flight from America to Australia. What are you talking about over here? I, I think just simply we're talking about, you know, common practices when you get married, you walk, you know, down the aisle to a chuppah. Some families in America, you know, everyone walks down. You get your brothers, your sisters, your nieces, your nephews, you know, your second cousin, your third cousins, right? The people uh, you drink, you drink uh, schnapps with at, at the kiddush. Uh, everyone's walking down the aisle, but here in Eretz Israel, really only the chassan and kala walk down. Who accompanies them, right? There's big machlokim about this. You know, people get very worked up about this here in Israel. A lot of Haredi people, chas v'shalom, to have the parents of the chassan walk down the aisle. You have to have two. Only men with men. We don't associate men with that. Even a, a son with his mother. Chas v'shomol, chas v'shomol, chas v'shomol, chas v'shomol. The king's terrible. But some people are very mocked about this. Uh, my father wasn't so mocked about this. Um, he did whatever the other side wanted. So my parents wanted to walk me down to the to the to the, to the chuppah. So they walked me down, and my wife was accompanied by her parents. Um, those are two options, but I think the Gemara is saying a third option, which is the correct option, is that this is really chas v'shalom to say in the Haredi circles, is that the Kala is accompanied by Shluchei Abal. Who is Shluchei Abal? His parents. The Kala is walked down by her future in-laws, by her father-in-law and her mother-in-law. This is really Kfira. Oh my gosh. But this is what the Gemara says. I can't, can't say it enough, but this is what it says. So... This daf, Mem Ches Amazes, discusses the ramifications, the halachic ramifications of when this happens. That point where the father gives over his daughter. Basically, his daughter starts walking down to the chuppah with the shluchei abba, with the parents of the, the husband, right, of the groom. They're walking her down. Once that happens, so she's considered somewhat more in the rishus of the, the husband than before. Now, it's not like under the canopy. You know, when when she gets under the canopy with the husband, that's nechasal chupavolo nivola. However, this is mesira. So what does it what does it do? So there's different opinions in the Gemara. Some say it's it works for everything. It's like a chupa. Others say which what the halacha is. It only works for yerusha or the ksuva, which really means the dowry, right? When you get married, you know your father-in-law promises you certain things. Sometimes the father-in-law promises you the the girl promises the girl's father promises the husband an apartment building and Schneller, you know, you know, a grand piano, um, you know, uh, you know, a lifetime guarantee to go all the Pesach programs like KRM. Uh, <laughs> um, sometimes they offer financial assistance. Sometimes they'll just get you a watch. You know, they don't get nothing, but sometimes they'll give you a watch. You know, the standard is to get a watch. Nice four hundred dollar watch, you know, by I don't know Bauman Mercy. Someone telling me you got uh, or um, some people give a shas, right? They give a shas shulchan aruch. When I got married, I asked for a shas, and I wanted a tour shulchan aruch. And the shiras devoted one. Uh, it was three thousand shekel. They offered to pay two thousand out of three thousand. I got a shas, a cheaper shas, Talman. Uh, regular Talman shots, and I got uh, she got to, I didn't get a watch, I didn't want a watch at that point. I wasn't interested in watches. Now it's a little different. You know, now we got our you know, we got you know, this is a fossil smart watch generation six, you know, compatible with Android. Which my phone is Android, so you know, it's an expensive watch. My birthday present $350. I bought it for myself for my birthday, I buy my own presents. I told my wife that's what I want. I ordered it from Fossil. Well, it was shipped to America, but after Pesach, they gave it to my parents, gave it to someone. My family was in, was in America for Pesach. So I got it. A $350 smart watch by Fossil. I think I'm pretty much ahead of the times with, with technology more than a lot of other people from America. 
I haven't got my Tesla yet, but hopefully soon. Um, so, uh, they give you a watch. They give you a watch. They give you a, uh, a Shas. That's the only thing that it, it has a lot of significance. We'll see also it has a lot of significance in terms of if she commits adultery, she runs away in the middle of walking down the aisle and she goes and she commits this, she goes to a hotel and she's together with another man. She's only Chayev Chayek, not like an Aram Rasa, she's Chayev Skila. Uh, besides that, Nafka, I mean, uh, the main Nafka, I mean, in terms of monetarily, is the fact that the husband, if she were to die at that point in the middle of the aisle, she just passes out. I mean, that would be pretty bad, but he would be entitled to that dowry. He could keep the dowry that the father in law gives him. Why? Why only that? So the idea is, like the Gemara said in Mem Zainam and Bez, that once um, that the father-in-law gives his dowry based on uh, chasnas, that's the Gemara's lash on the Gemara chasnas, Mem Zainam and Bez, the Gemara says, Mishum ichitunehu ha'ichtenehu. The father gives over his dowry for chasnas. What's chasnas? You know, mechutanim, right? When you, when you become mechutanim, when you become when you, you know, the, the closeness that you share is becoming part of a, a greater family. When is that point that people become michutanim, they become in-laws of each other? Right, when's that connection? When the father gives over his daughter to the husband's parents, right? Then they become michutanim. He's giving his daughter over to who? Not just the husband. The husband's still waiting under the cup, but he walked down already, right? But they're giving her over to... Uh, his parents. Now they're becoming Mikhutanim, right? The Shulchan Ba'al, those are his parents. Now they become Mikhutanim. They become Mikhutanim. That's why he gives a dowry. He gives a dowry because he wants to establish a good relation with the future in laws. Hey, I'm becoming future in laws. Look what I gave to your Look what I gave to your son. I gave him an apartment. I gave him, you know, Pesach in Dubai. I gave him everything. You know, I gave him a Rolex. You know, and if you're really from, you know, and you really have a lot of money and you give him. A golden menorah, you know, that's like the base on Migdash, <laughs> the size of the one in the base on Migdash. I'm joking. You know, people do give, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a large range of dowries given out depending on how Hamish you are, how much money you have, how much you want to impress your Mithutanim or your son in law, uh, or how much you want that son in law. Because if he's from Tifra, Hebron, a great yeshiva, you want to get the best son in law, they'll give him a nice apartment. Two apartments, three apartments, you know, for his kids and his grandkids. <laughs> anyway, it's gotten a little ahead of hand here in Israel, people giving apartments. It's just a sad thing that people, the minute some families give apartments, even though they have no money and they're in debt, they become more in debt just to give these apartments, just so they want a bachar from Tifra. I'll tell you what I think. If you, if you, if, if this bachar is demanding an apartment, he is not a good, he is not a good bachar. He's not from a good yeshiva, in my opinion, because if you're holding out for a girl for money, I mean, that's like terrible. It's like, who do you want? You want the girl, you want the money. You're marrying the girl, you're not marrying the money. You know, to hold out and not to go out with girls and to not get, get engaged with, you like the girl, but I won't get married unless she gives me an apartment. Oh yeah, of course, because the whole purpose of life is I've sit in Kolo and I need an apartment, I shouldn't pay rent. This is stupid, Mishugoyim. People are crazy here. And Roshi Yeshiva here, are the biggest Yeshivas, they tell their bottom to demand this. It's so sad. It's a cheshbon, you know, we have to, you know, it does, of course, you shouldn't do it for money, but practically we need a way to live. Well, did you ever think maybe the system is broken? The stupid thing. Anyway, my words are a little harsh, but I believe that true. It's a stupid thing. And it's a crazy thing. And it puts so many people in debt and ruins families and people get people heart attacks. It's a very sad thing. Anyway, that's the conclusion of today's share. I hope you enjoyed. See you in the next one.